Good morning, I'm Joey Sparks, reminding you that God's mercies are new this very morning. And Jesus is tempted in the wilderness by Satan, and as soon as he leaves the wilderness, his earthly ministry begins. That begins in Galilee and specifically begins in his hometown of Nazareth in Luke chapter 4. And it's there that he stands up in the synagogue and he reads from Isaiah chapter 61. And it's a very significant moment as that text is talking about the good news and the complete reversal of injustice that's been happening now will be reversed in the life of the Messiah. So Jesus reads, and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon the Lord's servant. He's going to proclaim, he's going to preach good news, good news, good news to the poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed. He reads the text, and the crowd's eyes focus on him. And he tells them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What he's doing is he's showing that from the beginning of his ministry, he's not just one claiming to be a savior. He is the sent Messiah, the sent Messiah sent from God. So he's fulfilling the promises of deliverance they had long heard from the Old Testament prophets. But listen, even though they knew the Old Testament scriptures, even though they knew the prophecies about the Messiah, they would still reject this teaching of Jesus. They would reject it overall and crucify him by the time it's all over. But even in this specific moment in Luke 4, those in his hometown reject his teaching about being the Messiah. And it's swift, it's intense. They even attempt to throw him off a cliff to his death. What can we learn about that? Well, if we are not careful, if we are not humble before Scripture, we can miss truth just as those in Nazareth did that day. We don't know what caused them to, but we can assume that it may have been their familiarity with the childhood Jesus that kept them from thinking, believing that he was the sent promised Messiah. Today, there are any number of factors that can keep us from seeing the truth that we need to know about God, about his son, and about the life change that's required of us to follow him. Consider a few of these that might stand in our way. Long-held popular doctrines and culture can keep us from learning directly from God. Maybe family allegiances can keep us from that submission to clear texts. Maybe the emotions we have about what we desire, that can keep us from accepting the truth we need to hear. This one's a little tough, too. This is what they ran into. Maybe it's our complacency with knowing certain texts already that have kept us sometimes from seeing and knowing the author of the text, that have really kept us from enjoying the deep riches that he's preserved therein. So let's be humble. Let's be thankful. Let's be open. Let's also be certain about what we read. That's what Luke gave us, certainty about the things that you've learned. We thank you for your time this early morning. We want you to have a great day. We want you to let the timeless word of God be your meditation all day today. I woke up this morning.